Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mike from Bacon Bibles and Barbells. We got episode 18. How you doing, Dave? Doing well. How's it going, guys? How's it going, Mike? So here's kind of where I'm at. I thought I was going to do a cut, and I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to start a cut going into the week before Thanksgiving. <laughs> so that's that's not going to happen. World's shortest cut. But so today, we've got, again, myself and Dave, and we're going to be talking uh, with a special guest, John. We're going to talk about goal setting, dieting, and also getting into some programming so you can have some long-term success, specifically your body composition. So, John, how you doing? I'm doing great. How about you guys? Doing good. Doing good. I got my coffee. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm all amped up. So, Woo! Really just- excited to call in. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. Well, as you guys know, our favorite sponsor is Gary's Blades. Scrape your face the dumb dull way. Feel like you're underpaying for razor blades? Try Gary's, the fine hair pulling sensations that can only be found with Gary's blades. Back to you, Mike. <laughs> Dave, Sorry. that that was great. You nailed Our it. Famous one. <laughs> uh, so, John, let's uh, let's let's let our uh, our fans get a, to know you a little bit. Uh, tell us a little about yourself. Um, let's see. Well, basically, it just boils down to. I'm 32 years old, um, been in the Wisconsin area, so running outside is not always the best thing for me uh, with the freezing temperatures. Um, I'm a bigger guy, 5 foot 10, um, been big most of my life. In my high school years, I was in the 220s while I played football, um, but then in college, in my post-college years, I ballooned up to 295 pounds. Um, started to make some changes in my life, uh, trimmed down to about 260, but I've kind of plateaued there and it's been hard for me to get down beneath that 260 mark. Um, just to give you guys some background, I've tried CrossFit, I've tried different muscle confusion programs like P90X or different um, personal trainer uh, muscle confusion programs. Um, and in terms of diet, I've, I've been vegan, I've done juice fasts, I've done Atkins, I've done calorie counting. But honestly, the thing that really it boils down to is I'll start strong and I just can't seem to finish. I'll lose a bunch of weight, 10, 15, sometimes even 20 pounds. But then I plateau and I plateau hard and it's hard to get past the discouragement of that. And, you know, typical stuff about life getting in the way um, and falling out of the habit of of working out. So I've just uh, part of what prompted me calling you into you guys was hopefully getting an idea of like, how can I make this a long-term part of my life and get some long-term success as well as, you know, starting off with um, maybe some more baby steps to get a foundation for how I can, uh, and then build onto that foundation after that. Yeah. John, we're, first of all, say on behalf of me and Dave, we're really glad you called in. Um, and I think what we're really excited about this is this, we're a lot of times we, we have guests and they'll say kind of their journey and the, kind of give their, their, their positives and they kind of know where they're at. They know where they're going and they're kind of coming on to kind of give advice, which is cool is to have you on saying, Hey, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, I need yeah. some, I need some help, need some pointers. And that's, that's one of the huge reasons why I do this podcast is, you know, to give information for you guys, get you guys on track and, you know, get, give you some good information um, for long-term success. So that's kind of where we're going to be focusing on. Yeah. So you said you, you tried vegan, um, Atkins and calorie counting, and then the fourth one it says juice fast here on the outline. I got it in front of me. I thought it said juice farts. I was like, try try, ve- try vegan juice farts. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know I didn't know if juice farts was a result of trying vegan. Like if that was kind of where you're going at. <laughs> no, there was um there was a, a program or I saw something on Netflix called fat sick and nearly dead. Um, yeah. pretty popular, I guess yeah. on Netflix. And that prompted me to try doing some juice fasts. And mm. honestly, like you, it might as well have been juice farts. Cause some of the stuff, that, <laughs> uh, 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 I'll just leave it there for a uh, PC sake, but, um, <laughs> yeah, no juice fasts in the terms of, uh, just literally eating nothing but juice for days. Gotcha. And so have any of these diets, been really sustainable or is there one that you've kind of enjoyed or like what's like you've tried those diets like where are you kind of at now and like where do you kind of struggle with i guess um so basically where i for all of them like they were sustainable for short bursts Mm -hmm. right uh you you know you start off vegan and it's really easy to say like i don't eat meat or you start off with atkins and it's really easy to say like i just don't eat bread right Um, right but it's your typical life stuff that gets in the way of like 
you're out and there's literally nothing to eat here mm. except for bread or right. with calorie counting, you know, it's two o'clock in the afternoon and you've already hit your limit and you're like, Oh my gosh, like I want, I'm really starving right now. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it has just been, you know, it's easy to have the willpower to do some of this stuff for the first week, two weeks, three weeks. But once you start plateauing, it's like, okay, so why am I starving myself? if This is literally doing nothing right now. Yeah. And, um, that brings up a really good point is that this is, a, this is, this goes with everything, not just dieting, but it has to be something that's sustainable for the long term. It kind of, we're going to get into kind of goal setting. That kind of goes right with that is that you have to have reasonable goals. And a lot of people start off and they say, man, I just gained some weight. I want to lose a hundred pounds. And they have this, they put huge goals in short terms. But if you, even if you lose less weight, but you do kind of do more slowly, gradually, and over a long period of time and sustainable, in the long run, you're going to lose more weight and it's not going to be just something you do and then you, you lose it. It's going to be something that's going to, um, you're going to be able to maintain. That's kind of the biggest goal is picking a diet that's going to be sustainable for the long term. Right. And uh, there's a mistake that a lot of people have and it's they, they look for the short, simple solutions you know, like uh, you said, the Atkins diet, just cut out carbs. And the thing is, when you're, when you're in these social circumstances, like Thanksgiving kind of coming up is a great example. Sometimes it's just, it's not possible. And it's just, you have to decide uh, what's going to be most sustainable for you. My advice is to do calorie counting. And that's not an end all be all. You know, if your body works calories in, calories out. So, to lose weight, you have to consume less calories than you burn out. And so if you count your calories, it's just going to be the most accurate way and it's the most flexible approach. So you can at times maybe do, you want, let's say you want to try low carbs, you could try doing kind of low carb approach, see if it works for you um, while counting your calories. And so that way you can kind of test things out, but you're still hitting your calories. So it's not like if one diet's not working out, then all of a sudden it's game over. So you could kind of um, count your calories, um, which a great episode for you listeners to listen to is our previous episode. We talked with Tony about setting up your calories and setting up your macronutrients. And so count your calories, hit those, and you know tr- try different diet approaches. You could try um, a low-carb diet. You could try something like intermittent fasting we've talked about. Um, see what works for you. But a lot of it is just discipline. And the reason I tell people to continue with calorie counting is because a lot of people don't like it because it seems a little tedious because you get to plug in your calories and track them. But the good thing is it keeps you accountable. It keeps you on track. It gives you a structure, a structure you can work with. It's an accurate way that you know you're going to lose weight if you hit these calories. And if you're not, you can make simple adjustments. Just That would be the biggest thing. And again, you can go to our previous episode, episode 17, to figure out how exactly to calculate your calories. But that's going to be kind of the, the foundation is having that so dave is there anything you wanted to add or anything you had to say yeah sure um as far as uh with diets i tried uh i didn't try it i I didn't i didn't really try the uh, atkins i didn't try uh vegan i did try juicing uh because of uh the documentary that you mentioned earlier um i didn't try it like that's all I did, but I would, I would throw it in there and that's a good, it's, I mean, juicing is a, a solid way to, to, if you want to try to cl- do a cleanse, you know, for a meal or two, it's expensive and it's stinking an- annoying. I hate, I hate having to cut up, clean all that fruit. And then you, you, you pulverize it into a <laughs> juicer and you have like one cup. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's, it's just not satiating. It's just it's not. <laughs> Like yay, and then you drink it in ten seconds. And you're like, well, that that was good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm full in like a second. That was that was that was savoring it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, I I did the juice thing myself. I did. Uh, goodness, what's uh, what the point system? Weight Watchers. I did Weight, weight Watchers. Watchers. Yeah, and and it was it was it was kind of the same. It's the same thing that Mike's referring to, except for. Uh, we use uh, a, a different different system. Uh, we don't have a point system, but it's it's the, it's kind of the same thing as, mm-hmm. as Weight Watchers. It's a lot cheaper. Weight Watchers is not free, but um, yeah, flexible dieting like it's it's going to be a lot more flexible than than vegan. 
And it's you're not going to be exhausted and worn out and stuck with one choice if you do Atkins than if you did flexible dieting. Tonight we had our date night. We went to uh, Jersey Mike's and got I got myself a nice big old sub. And I'm going to have to track what I ate and put that down. And if I have to adjust, I have to adjust for the rest of the week. But I'm not uh, you know, limited to you know, the senior-only menu because that's all the low, healthy, awesome meals are located at. And, and frankly, I found the hardest diets to keep were the ones that were ridiculous. I just felt hungry. I felt low energy. And the reason that that, 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 that is the way it is is because the diet's not really – for you, it's for uh, someone else that they wrote it up for, and there's a reason why it's not working for you, and no wonder you, you quit it. <clears throat> I've quit a diets before, and I, I really don't call this really dieting. I call it, you know, kind of a, you know, kind of like Instagram. You know what I mean? Like, like it's kind of a weird way to explain it, but you're just you're just keeping track of what you eat, like like people on their cameras and their plates and stuff. Like, <laughs> instead of taking a yeah. picture of it, you just put it into an app on your phone, and it takes maybe 15, 20 seconds. And you don't have to do that with every meal. I, I stopped doing it after about a month and I, I knew what the right amount of proteins and carbs and fats were, what it felt like and what it looked like. And I just kept eating the same thing. So I stopped having to track it so, as often. But, you know, it's um, a lot easier than having to be stuck with trying to juice or trying to eat only 10 carbs a day or anything like that. And you feel a yeah. lot better. Yeah. So kind of sum it up for your diet, you want to get your calories and you want to hit those, but that's not the end all be all. You want to make sure that you're at least getting in 0.68 grams uh, to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And so that's going to give you your, the proteins you need for, especially uh, if you're going to be training, you want to have that protein in there. Um, carbohydrates and fat can be used interchangeably. You could set those however you'd like as long as you're staying within your calories. And then you also want to get in some fiber. So I would suggest 10 grams of fiber for every 1,000 calories. And fiber just kind of helps, you know, with your overall bodily functions. And then you're just going to want to make sure you're getting bi- uh, just some ways to gain vitamins and minerals. I just that's just to promote overall energy and overall health. But your main focus is going to be hating those calories, being consistent with it. And you know, if you want to play around with different diets and different approaches, do that, but do everything under or while you're counting your calories. It's mm-hmm. going to keep you accountable. It's going to give you structure. And you know, like it, there's no mystery. If you don't count your calories and you go over you know you're, you're going to step on the scale and you're going to be overweight. If you do hit your calories or you go under, you're going to step on the scale and you're going to see weight loss and you'll be like, I knew that was coming. So it's you're very aware. There's no surprises that can throw you off and get you frustrated. Set those calories up. Uh, focus on that. And just be consistent. And now the second point I want to make is you mentioned that this year you mentioned you hit 2 o'clock in the afternoon and you're out of calories. So what do you do then? And so uh, a tip that I would recommend is just to make simple solutions to cut out calories. So, for instance, if you have eggs in the morning, switch to egg whites. That's going to cut out calories. If you usually have some, you have your kind of your dinner and some bread on the side, cut out that bread. If you're making sandwiches, sometimes that what I like to do is instead of using bread, I'll use lettuce, uh, iceberg lettuce as a bun. So that's cutting out calories. So make simple swaps that are going to cut out calories. And so what that's going to do is you can eat the same quantity or the same as many meals as you usually do. But because you're cutting out calories to make those simple swaps, uh, you're still going to be hitting your calories. And so that's what I'd recommend. Make simple solutions that are going to swap. So cut out if you're drinking any soda, anything that's got anything that you're drinking has calories in is something you could easily swap with water or diet soda that's going to cut out calories and just think of ways you could eat something that's going to fill you up that just has less calories, you know. And mm-hmm. um, the thing about counting your calories, it, you know, it does take a little bit. This is kind of what we talk about, with Tony. It takes a little bit to kind of get used to it and kind of hit that sweet spot where you, you're eating the right amount that you're comfortable with and you're, you're starting to get in the hang of it. But it takes some time. Stick with it. Uh, don't be frustrated. And, you know, I, th- I do think calorie count is going to be the most accurate. And, play around with it, just find your sweet spot and stick with it. And, sure. um, 
hold yourself accountable for that. Yeah. One last point. Um, if, if you find that once you uh, plug in the numbers, we, we, we recommend, um, IIFYM.com. There's a few other good cal- calorie counters out there. I'm sorry, calorie calculators out there that are, that are excellent. But, uh, if you find that, you know, by 2 PM, that's it. I've eaten everything that they told me I can eat and I am starving. Um, don't, uh, you, I mean, when you're going into this, there's the worst thing you can do is just, uh, in a sense, rip the bandaid off really hard. You have to, you have to ease into it. Right. So mm-hmm. and it's called reverse dieting. You can reverse diet down to the number or you can reverse diet up a little more. Like, so if, if you're not eating enough, you would reverse diet up a hundred calories more each week until you get to the number that you're, that you're supposed to. I don't want to make it too complicated. PM, you're done. And you are like, ah, oh, man, that's it. And, and you know, you're eating as clean as you can. And you fa- and, and for some reason, what you were used to eating and what you're supposed to be eating now, according to that calculator, they're just not lining up and you know, you're going to quit this in a day or two. Um, ease into it. Like, like, okay, you know, eat what you track, what you would eat if you're eating healthy and then try slowly to get down to that number you're supposed to be eating. Uh, but don't just, okay, well I'm going to fast the rest of the day. That's not going to work. Cause you're not going to keep that. Um, yeah. and that's what I do. Some like, 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 if I'm getting into a, if I'm going from a bulk to a cut, so I'm dropping maybe uh, seven, eight hundred calories. Well, not seven, gosh, it's a bit, it's a bit high, but like six hundred calories a day. Like I'm going from a bulk to a cut. I don't just boom. I'm dropping six hundred. No, I, I give it a couple of weeks to get down to that six hundred mm-hmm. caloric. So just, um, just another tip. I don't want to overload you with, yeah. that, but just, just don't, just don't crash your way into it because mm-hmm. it's not going to be uh, a sustainable diet. Right. And that, that's the thing. Cause a lot of people count the calories and it's like, they realize they're, they're probably eating like a thousand less calories than they're, they're typically be eating. And so that's a big gap. But if you go week by week, only 200 calories less, you're going to slowly be able to adopt and slowly kind of get used to it. You know, and the way I'd always look at it, it's okay. Next week I have 200 calories less per day. What one swap can I make? That's 200 calories. So I'm eating the same thing, but I just make one swap. So for me, honestly, sometimes it was, I like to have pancakes <laughs> and I would put peanut butter on my pancakes. So I just took out putting on peanut butter and that's 200 calories. So each week I'd make one swap to cut out that, that calories that I needed to drop. And I slowly got to the point where I got the calorie love I needed to, to lose weight. And I stuck with that. And you, you adapt to it and it takes discipline, it takes hard work. We're not saying that, but keep with it. And if you need ideas for food, Pinterest has so many healthy recipes. Just search healthy, whatever, healthy, whatever. There's going to be like a million food moms that have good recipes. So that's my, that's my reco. All right. So that, that kind of, that kind of covers the diet portion of it. And then uh, Dave, do you want to get the ball rolling for, uh, for John, how we can help set a goal and then program off of that goal? Sure. So, um, and, and uh, some of this is just my uh, my um, opinion, but this is something that I've, I've seen for myself. So, there's there's uh, a few different uh, goals out there for most. We're going to generalize this uh, as much as we can, but there are there are three big goals out there. If you're going to train for size, um, yeah. that's that's the bodybuilding goal of ten to twelve reps, higher reps, lower weight, working on more of that sarcoplasmic muscle muscle fibers. If you're training for strength, that's more powerlifting, four to six reps, more weight, 80% of your max weight, uh, one rep max. And that's, uh, and that's it's, you know, there's a sport for that as well. But uh, it's all basically strength uh, training. So you're, you're lifting heavier things uh, fewer times. Then, um, then there's, there's fat loss. So uh, some might say, well, yeah, I want to be big and strong, but I, I really want to see those abs or I want to see some definition. I want to fit in those jeans I used to be able to wear a couple months ago that – now I've got a sedentary job I can't fit into anymore, and I don't want to buy more clothes. Um, and uh, you can you can do um, bodybuilding with cardio, but it's really hard, if not impossible, really. I would say it's impossible to to lose fat while trying to build strength. And so that's why I made a third a third goal of of fat loss, uh, which includes cardio, circuit training, and dieting to cut versus dieting to bulk or maintain. Um, and so if you're starting off, if you're starting off and you're you know, looking in the mirror and like, I got to lose some weight, uh, recommended that you would cut or you would, you'd, you'd focus on, on fat loss before you try focusing on, on, uh, strength training. 
And uh, you could definitely do size. You, you could do bodybuilding types, the type routines that involve cardio, or you've got like limited amount of rest between exercises. And that could be your cardio in a sense of uh, while you're, while, while you're, you're training. So you are actually burning fat while you're in the gym. So you're not stuck on that stupid treadmill for two hours a day, but you're actually doing things that you enjoy, which is yeah. what we're all, we're all about. Right. So that's, that's a basic intro to goal setting. Yeah. And so just like dieting, like we talked about, you, you, you got to do something that's sustainable for you. So you got to, honestly, a person like yourself, that's just trying to lose weight. You have the most flexibility. You could kind of do whatever workout you want. And just kind of, you, you're able to test the waters. You're just looking to burn calories. So you could kind of test the waters, get a taste maybe for some more bodybuilding type training. Then maybe you could do some, a little bit of strength training. And um, again, you're just looking to burn calories because you're just looking for fat loss right now. But you can kind of test the waters, see, 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 just burn calories, but see what type of training you enjoy. And if you find like a type of training that you really resonate with and you really like, Go stick with that and continue with that. And so that way, after you've lost some weight, you can kind of know this is the type of training I'm going to stick with. It's going to keep me wanting to hit the gym. And so that's 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 my recommendation to you. Is um, You're probably not going to be at this stage, go all into one goal. You're like I said, you're you're, you're feeling it out. And so it's just like dining, you kind of test things out, hit that sweet spot. Same thing with goal setting, test out different types of training, different types of workouts and see what works for you. So, so circuit training, what are you referring to when you say circuit training? Like, is there a good program that you have or a good thing that you would recommend for somebody who's getting into circuit training or like a good cardio exercise for somebody who's starting off? Or is it just sit on a bike and enjoy the next two hours? Um, so what I do, what I've done with circuit training is um, there's a lot of good routines on bodybuilding.com. Uh, that is not officially sponsored by Baking Bibles and Barbells, but we'd love to get their sponsorship. That um, they got, got some good stuff. They got some good stuff there for circuit training. What I would recommend: pick four exercises you really enjoy doing and um, break it up by body type. So today, with, for me, was chest day. So I did. I actually did. Um, actually, I did six. So for me, I did six exercises for chest, and I, I had three, two circuits, um, three exercises per circuit. Did them, no rest in between, and then uh, with the, when you're done with the circuit, you just take a, f- a few seconds just to take, catch a breath, um, and then boom, hit it again. You know, try to try to hit, hit you know either eight or ten reps per each exercise, and you know you'll figure it out working it in there which ones work for you. But there, again, there are some exercise programs on bodybuilding.com that basically do that, and that's a good way just to to get your heart rate up. And you're you're working and you're you're working your muscles and all that. And you're getting everything flowing and uh, you're you're getting used to the exercise movements while you're in this this fat loss phase. And that's what I would do. Uh, I don't recommend P90X and Insanity mainly because there's a lot of uh, body weight stuff going on. When I did it, I I, I found myself getting a lot weaker. Uh, I didn't I didn't get did not get stronger. I, I really did not. Uh, lose any weight. I, I felt like I was um, just doing a lot of things that were un- unnecessary and unhelpful. Uh, and that was me personally. I did P90X for 90 days and I, I wasn't a huge fan of the results when it was all said and done. The issue of P90X is everyone wants this quick, instant, give me this 90 day challenge. And like, I've seen so many people do P90X and s- some people, you know, some people have done it and moved on and still still been exercising some some people just do it for 90 days and then they're done and it's just like oh that was really hard now i'm just gonna take a break and then they they don't know where to go from there make sure that you're again you're we're looking at everything in long term so you can you can switch programs you can switch different types of training like you said you you have the ability to test the water but make sure that you're looking at this as a long-term thing not like this you need to get this done in 60 days and that, that's it so um, yeah, I would pick a I would pick a program on bodybuilding.com, stick with it for at least at least a month, if not six weeks, and uh, track it. That's the important thing is track your numbers. If you lifted, if it said do chest for three sets of twelve, write down. Okay, I did. You know, have a book with you. Um, I have a little notebook. I do a little spreadsheet thing. I have BB, you know, barbell bench, barbell incline, and I just in that thing I put down. 90 pounds, 245 pound plates. 
And then I try the next week to do 95, 95 pounds or 100 pounds or 110 pounds. But that's the important aspect of it. If you're going to be uh, doing a program off of bodybuilding.com or if you want us to write you a program, we could definitely do that as well. And um, But the important thing is to track what you did so you're not just walking in, okay, well, gosh, I guess I should throw weights around for the next hour. Yeah, that is so important for beginners to track their weights because so many beginners just say, oh, I'm going to get to lifting. And they'll just be like, oh, there's some 20-pound dumbbells. Let me pick them up. And it's, if you're tracking your weights, you could come in and be like, okay, it kind of you, you kind of get used to having a structure and getting used to the gym. And you kind of get – it gives you goals. You're like, oh, last week I did 30 pounds. I'm going to go to 35 pounds. So make sure you're tracking your weights. And everything is just adding more work over time, progressive overload. That's all – exercises you start out you add more work over time and you develop so like i said just to recap do do some type of whatever type of exercise is really going to get you to burn calories right now keep track of it yeah. and see see what you like and go from there you know even five pounds a week make making progress is it's, it's progress so that i think that's what gets people really motivated to stick to their goals is when they start to see progress and they start to see development um, that gives you a lot of motivation to keep going to the gym and keep living a healthy lo- lifestyle. Thank you guys so much. And then again, if you advice. have any questions, just again, meet, meet us, hit us up in the Facebook group. Um, I know we kind of yeah. busted through it really quickly, but we'd love to help you out more. Thank you, gents. Hey, moms, need your breast milk. Like, <laughs> these gains are going to grow themselves. And some sriracha to go with it. Did you see that, like, that <laughs> gif of the guy trying to do a squat and the singlet busted at the, <laughs> the, the butt crack? <laughs> no, I didn't see oh, that. It's my fear now. That's why, it's one of, <laughs> that's, that's, why, that's why you don't do powerlifting. That's right. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that much of it. Mommy, mammy, moo. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. We are back with bacon. This is Bacon Bibles and Barbells, episode number 18. And we are sponsored by the Not So Great Courses. Underwater basket weaving got your fancy? How about Green Tech Wood Art? The Not So Great Courses has everything for you. Buy your cassettes or eight track tape sets today. And we are grateful for them on our show. So, Mike, how's Hi, it going? I'm doing great. We should have some coffee to refill this for the second yeah. half, but it's all right. Yeah, we got we've got another uh, another member of our fam in the uh, in the show. So this is this is a first having two different BBB ears in the podcast. This is exciting. Ooh, what's up, Blaine? Blaine, you want we got a uh, yeah? We should probably introduce him. We get <laughs> third guest here is uh, Blaine. He's a member of the group. He is notorious for posting memes of the office <laughs> and posting pictures of vaping, craft beer, and you play the banjo, is that true? Yes, I do. Play lots of stuff. So, so tell us a little about yourself. That's cool. My fitness life is like, I played sports in high school all my life, and then when I got out, I was kind of looking for something to like fulfill my competitive side, and so I got into running really big, and like I was never into that. I hated it. Um, but I got to like running 8Ks and stuff. I never went too much further than that and then like one day i like just decided to join a gym and um like i just went in and like like you guys were saying earlier like found some 20 pound weights and threw them around and um did a lot of body weight exercises and everything and then it wasn't until this past year that i really started getting serious about my diet and getting on a plan and everything and then about the last six months i've been into powerlifting that's been really awesome for me so and the bbb group has been just amazing for tips and uh encouragement and everything no yeah yeah, that's that's so cool to hear and i think it's so interesting because uh i I think like right when the group kind of started is when blaine started to get into powerlifting it was just it's kind of cool to see how he's kind of like he posts videos and he's like making gains and he's like, he's bulking and he, <laughs> he's putting out some weight. He's making some strength progress. And now he's got his meat coming up, not this weekend, but the, 
well, when this comes out uh, for our listeners, it's going to be this upcoming Saturday. So that's that's pretty exciting. How do you feel? A little nervous? Or are you excited? Or um, I, I'm very excited, but um, I'm actually going to be proposing to my girlfriend the day before. Oh man! So I'm more nervous about that. But um, yeah, I, I've, I'm just kind of going into it with the mindset of. I'm definitely competitive, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. I'm just, I'm going to go in to compete against what I know, basically compete against myself. And, you know, yep. I'm assuming she's not one of our 14 <laughs> listeners. <so. laughs> Spoiler alert. She doesn't even have Facebook. <laughs> oh, okay. That's she's one good. of those people. Well, good that she doesn't hear this. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. Congrats. It's really exciting. Thank you. That's so cool. What, how 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 you plan on propose proposing? Uh, well, there's this really awesome coffee shop in Greenville, South Carolina, called Methodical. That like she loves. It's it's an awesome place, and um, I'm gonna try to get there like right when they close and set up a sound system. And then um, some of her friends are photographers, and they've got they've made like a fake invitation for like they're going to bring her to and it's going to be me there. I'm going to sing a song, propose and they'll be there to take pictures and everything. And then that's awesome, man. Awesome. That's, that's way cooler than what I did. So <laughs> <laughs> no, that's sweet. And I, I going back to the, the powerlifting meet, that's, that's pretty cool too. Cause uh, you know, I always tell people, and we kind of talk about this in episode 10, do a powerlifting meet, you know, and, strive for PRs and get that experience under your belt. It's going to feel your hunger to continue to train. And it's going to give you kind of more confidence next time you meet. And it just gives you like, honestly, you'll probably have so much adrenaline that you'll probably do way better than you do in the gym. So I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited for you to post about it and see your results. So yeah, that's uh, what I'm hoping for. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, well, all the BBB fam will be, uh, we'll be pulling for you. So yep. Yeah. I can't wait. I think uh, it's time for. Are you doing Thanksgiving Blitz? <laughs> I'm getting better. I'm getting better at sound effects. I'll, it's, I'll, it's I'll take that it's second turkey gobble as a yes. So, Blaine, you, down, you down for the for a game? Quick little game. You got sure. All right. Why not? So we're playing. We're going to play a game I made up. It's called Thanksgiving Blitz. So, um, so since Bulksgiving is coming up uh, for the live audience on Thursday. Uh, we want to get amped up for this Thursday. And for those listening, uh, when this is the recording comes out, you can think about all the games you previously made and all the food, delicious food that you had. So what we're going to do in this game, Thanksgiving Blitz, is I'm going to rapid fire two uh, types of food. So I'll say um, one type of food and the second type of food, and you have to tell me which one is better. All right, Blaine, pumpkin pie or pecan pie? Mm, I'm going to say pecan pie. Okay, is it pecan or pecan? How I'm feeling that day. White gravy or brown gravy? Brown gravy. Sweet potato, baked potato. Sweet potato. Why, 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 or, why or dark meat? Dark meat. Dark meat. Turkey yeah. breast or okay. turkey dr- drumstick? Turkey breast. Uh, stout or porter? What are you going to have? Porter. Porter? Ooh, I like it. Sprinkled or dunked? <laughs> you anabaptist. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, not you. Him for saying both. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, I thought we were talking about donuts. Stuffing, green bean casserole. Casserole. Uh, vinegar base or tomato base? Tomato. Chicken and, chicken and dumplings versus chicken pastry. What is chicken pastry? It's, it's uh, well, it's an Eastern North Carolina thing. I didn't know. I guess you don't know. It's, <laughs> it's their version of uh, chicken and dumplings, I guess. Uh, it's their version of chicken and dumplings. It's very interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, carrot cake or pumpkin pie? Mm, pumpkin pie every time that is that is there's no there is no competition <laughs> with that <laughs> pumpkin pie or pumpkin cookie pumpkin pie pumpkin pie <laughs> pumpkin pie pumpkin. versus pumpkin spice latte in a red satan cup <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> starbucks joke no one got it but covenanters are pretty are pretty stoked about the starbucks that's all right that's all i got oh, well that was our <laughs> there we go let's guys so, <laughs> um, so guys, since you've just enjoyed Thanksgiving, if you guys listen to recording, please, if you know, if Thanksgiving is a time where everyone feels like terrible because they ate so much. 
And they're like, it was worth it, but now I got to hit the gym. So guys, if you need any programs or if you want to help with how to get on track, not like you, hopefully this has episode been helpful, but you can also contact us at baconbiblesbarbles at gmail.com. And we will be more than willing to uh, help, help you guys get on track and maybe calculate your calories for you, give you some ideas for foods to eat, and give you maybe some sample programs to try out. So feel free to contact us. Are you looking at your belt line and you know that God may be long suffering, but the mirror sure isn't? Well, our new sponsor is the Rapture Diet Pill. And I don't know where to go from there, but that's, that's where I'm... What about the, what's the What's about the Veloci Rapture pre workout? Guys, uh, we'd <laughs> like to introduce a new sponsor and uh, we'd like to thank uh, Dr. John MacArthur, who's hosting a new supplement line. And we've got exclusive BBB offer. It's called the Velocirapture. You know, the rapture's coming, so you need some energy. You need some. You need some fire. You need some uh, uh, authentic fire to get you going. So try the Velocirapture pre workout. Not only is it going to get you ready for the gym, but it's going to also get you ready for the rapture. Velocirapture. That was terrible. That redeem that redeem body before before the the, the fifth red moon. Oh, <laughs> oh alrighty. Uh, yeah, I guess it's time to wrap up. It's that time again, folks. So um, so a little update on the shirts. I know we've been we've been kind of uh, we've been kind of teasing the shirts over the past couple of months. We finally got a logo, and uh, working with a local, we decided we want to get you guys. Uh, the lowest price as possible and at the best quality uh, as possible instead of using um, a third party that that we can't actually communicate with face to face I decided uh, to find a local provider uh, who who not only can uh, get my hands on the shirt before we make it but you can buy me a lot cheaper um, a lot lower prices at a lot higher quality so I'm working with uh, blue dog graphics out of Wilson North Carolina and um, we have the design. I will get it. We will get a mock-up put on the uh, website. And Mike, I believe you said you're going to work on getting a, a payment pro- portal uh, on there as well. Right. So right? what I want to do is I'm going to have a pre-order checkout system. So you guys can see the T-shirt you're going to buy. You can put that pre-order up. We have everything ready to go to get the T-shirts ordered and shipped out. We just um, obviously this is a big investment, so we'd like to do a pre-order. So like, get on that. And we're going to do a special deal for the people who get on the pre-order. And that's going to um, hopefully guys get a little boost to get on that and help uh, get a cool t-shirt. So look out for that. I'll be posting the link in the group and I'll also post it um, in the show notes uh, once we get that updated. So, Yeah. And if we can sell our, our goal is to sell 50 shirts, um, and so that it, it, once you hit 50, the price of the shirt goes down significantly. So that'll give us, um, a little more a profit if we can hit 50 versus hitting 49. So our goal is 50 shirts and we'll probably buy about 10 or so, uh, to give away at future radio shows. So if we can get 40 of them pre-ordered, uh, through our listeners, you guys, uh, that'll really help us get the, uh, keep the show going right now. We're, it's all hundred percent out of profit. So, uh, if you, this would really help us out to get another year of uh, web and media hosting paid for. So uh, that should be with that. The link will be up soon. I will get a, um, a mock up from the develop or from the shirt guy. Uh, hopefully later this week, and we can get that up on the website. But that's coming. That's coming down the, the pipe. By the time you listen to this episode, we should have uh, more of it up there on the Facebook group and in the web, on the website. All right. Thanks, Dave, for the update. And all right, guys, this concludes episode 18 of Bacon Bottles and Barbells. Uh, if you'd like to contact us again, feel free to do so uh, through email at baconbiblesbarbells at gmail.com. Also, feel free to join our Facebook group at Bacon Bibles and Barbells. That's going to be a great way to interact with us, uh, get some updates, and just meet people and keep yourself accountable and just have a good time. So make sure to check out those great conversations we are having there. And guys, thanks for tuning in. And as always, gains and grace. Gains and grace.